Hi, is this Samantha? Hi, is this Anna? Yes, hi. Hi, how are you? Good, thanks. Uh, thank you for taking the time to speak with us today. Oh, my pleasure. Uh, we'd love to get some of your advice on some office etiquette related questions. Okay, okay? great. Yeah. Great. Um, I guess we'll start off with what's the most common workplace etiquette question you get asked? You know, I think one of the most common things I get asked about in the workplace right now is how to deal either with, you know, too many emails, too many people CCing, or too many people reply all, mm -hmm. um, and then also all the, the phone calls in the office, you know, people bringing the phones to the meetings, you know, or the laptop to the meeting, and not, you know, even if they're doing something for work, maybe they're checking email for work and not really focusing on the meeting, and, you know, that's definitely a problem, both for productivity and, you know, just for the meeting leader, it's not very respectful. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, another issue we have too is I know in my office we have an open plan office. Um, and so, say one of your coworkers brings in, you know, a lunch every day that kind of has a stench or mm. doesn't feel great. <laughs> but it's not somebody you work closely with. How do you suggest handling that? You know, it is. Okay, you know, obviously, if everybody has to smell this, it is okay to say, "Hey, listen, I'm sure that you love whatever it might be." Um, you know fried fish. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm trying to think of the, the, the smelliest thing I can think of right now. Um, you know, I know that you really, really enjoy this, but, you know, we all get to enjoy it, too. Um, mm -hmm. is, this, is there something else um, maybe that might work for lunchtime? Or if it's not a conversation you're comfortable having, you just might schedule your lunch away from your desk when they're right. having theirs. It's just going to kind of depend on, on the level of tact you can have with that person when you have that conversation. Mm -hmm. and, and I guess kind of similarly, how do you suggest handling in those open plan offices a colleague with a loud voice that can tend mm -hmm. to carry and could be distracting? This one is really tough. You know, people talking too loudly on the telephone is one of the biggest complaints I hear about in the office, and that, of course, extends to any talking at all to try to, you know, be concentrating is really difficult. So, you know, when you have that conversation, because it's a fair one to have, say, you know, hey, Sam, listen, um, you know, I know you get going on a conversation, but if you could keep your voice down, it would really help for concentration. Um, you know, would you mind doing that? You know, asking for that person's buy-in is a great way to get them on board. And then after that, it can just be a reminder, like, Sam, I'm sure you didn't mean to, but, you know, voice, voice down, you know, it can be mm -hmm. as simple as that. The more you describe it, you know, he's going to get that his voice is too loud once you tell it to him. Um, you know, the simpler, the better. Right, right. Um, another thing, too, that will be coming up, you know, in the next coming months especially is uh, gift giving. It's something that mm -hmm. people in the office get tripped up over. What are some basic rules of thumb you might have for that? You know, gift giving in the office can be a, a, a touchy subject sometimes. You know, it's not a great idea to give a gift to your boss. Um, it can really look like you're currying favor. One of the ways to get around that, you know, because some of us really do actually like our bosses, uh, mm -hmm. you know, to give them something is to do it as a group instead, you know, to all pitch in, chip in together. You know, a card is always fine. That's not a big deal. Um, but, you know, office draws, um, you know, sort of round robin type thing can be another mm -hmm. good way if your office wants to celebrate so that it doesn't put too much of a strain on, on any one person. Right, right. And what about with uh, coworkers, you know, on the same level or below you? Um, it's certainly okay to exchange gifts with your coworkers or if you have someone who assists you or you're leading a team. Um, what you want to do is remember to be fair about it. Um, so if you're not doing it for everybody, you need to think about why you're not. Um, if it's because you're actually friends with this person as well, do that gift exchange, but do it out of work as mm -hmm. friends instead if you're not going to be doing it for anybody else who would sort of be on, a, on an equal level with them. Right, right. And do you have any sort of... Um you know, specifics about what kind of gifts would be appropriate, you know, pricing-wise or mm -hmm. subject-wise? Yeah, good idea not to go too expensive with this. I mean, I would say anywhere from like 10 up to maybe $30. And I mean, you know, seriously, you've got, you've, you've got some play within that range for sure. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm certainly not buying all of my coworkers $30 gifts. So, you know, take this advice with a grain of salt. But you also want to stick with things that are a little more innocuous. So, you know, the coffee card to their favorite coffee shop, that's a great thing to do. You know, a new travel mug, stuff like that. You don't want to get anything too personal. Um, you know, mm -hmm. hand lotion might be about as personal as I might get, because people are particular with scents, for example. And I'd stay away from any type of clothing as well. Mm -hmm. um, OK. And Kind of on the subject of clothing, say someone in the office who's junior to you has a habit of dressing inappropriately, but you mm -hmm. feel you know awkward bringing it up. 
especially because it's so personal, but you know it's not helpful sure. for them to look this way. How do you approach that conversation, or can you approach that conversation? You know, if you have an HR department, they're a great place to start. They often have great resources on how to have this conversation with somebody, and they always prefer, um, at least every HR department I've ever talked to, prefers, you know, if you can handle this type of management yourself, but they're also there to give tips. Mm -hmm. um, so checking in with HR is great, but if you are having this conversation, obviously do it in private. You don't want to embarrass this person. Um, you might want to give them the benefit of the doubt. You know, I'm not sure if you were aware, but your clothing, you know, isn't really quite as conservative as, as the culture here usually asks for. Um, you know, so give them that benefit of doubt and then mm -hmm. offer a solution um, in mind. You know, I'd be happy to uh, give you, you know, some pictures, some examples of, you know, or some people here as role models to look to, you know, and ask if they feel comfortable resolving this themselves um, to mm -hmm. really get their buy-in to commit to that. I think that's, that's a really important thing to do. Great. And do you feel like that's something that's appropriate to address with someone, you know, on your level? I mean, obviously with the junior you have that overseeing of them, but mm -hmm. with somebody on your level... Is it inappropriate, especially if you're a friend? You know, if you're friends, it obviously makes it easier. In either of these cases, you know, think about language like, you know, I care about you and your success, and I've noticed that, you know, whatever it might be, that I've noticed this about your dress, you know, were you aware of this? And starting off with that, I care about you and your success, is mm -hmm. a great way, um, you know, to sort of say to this person, listen, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not trying to be critical of you, you know, there's a reason I'm saying this, basically. You know, you can always even say, you know, I know this is a little bit awkward, but since we're friends, I'd want you to tell me if it was the other way around. You know, mm -hmm. so you can go that road, too. It is a little bit more touchy if you're more peers than somebody's manager, um, but it's a, it's a judgment call at that point. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I know that, um, you know, when you're higher up in the industries, whatever it may be, uh, you'll get repeated, you know, lunch requests or meeting requests from people that you meet throughout your day. Uh, what's the best way to deal with that if it's something that you politely decline the first few times but they're still pursuing it? Is there a way to, you know, handle these requests? Um, so these are for meeting requests coming in from, from a, a, a boss or a manager? Well, not within your company, outside oh. of your company. Someone you might have met at a social event. Oh, I or see. I see. Um, you know, just letting them know. You know, listen. This is a this is a busy time of year for me. Um, you know, I, I hope you understand, but I don't think I'll be able to get together anytime soon. You know, something like that kind of gives them a, a larger idea about what your schedule is going to be like and what your availability is going to be like. It's okay mm -hmm. sometimes when the answer is really no in business. Sometimes it's better to actually say that. You know, it has to be polite and tactful and all of that and not make that person, you know, feel uncomfortable. But a straightforward, you know, I appreciate you reaching out, but I'm just, I'm, I'm not going to be able to have time to, to meet with you anytime soon. I hope you understand. That's a fair thing to do when done, you know, in a courteous way. All right, great. All right, well, Anna, thank you so much for sharing your tips with us. Yeah, no, Samantha, one other thing that I'd love to chat with you a little bit about is, um, you know, this fall I've teamed up with Pawns to talk about how women can reveal their best selves. And I was so surprised to realize um, in a new Pawns survey that about 40% of women aren't washing their face before they go to bed at night, which, you know, this can obviously leave your skin looking really dull. And in oh, the yeah. workplace, you know, when you talk about putting your best foot forward with the attire that you're wearing, you know, this extends, you know, not just to makeup, but also to your your skin as well you know so I've been loving the new Pond's luminous clean facial cleansers there's a couple different ones I really like the cream cleanser and these have this um, kaolin clay in them it's this uh, soft clay it's a natural mineral and it acts like a magnet to draw out the impurities in your skin so you know it reveals brighter skin more luminous skin and you know in the workplace this is important how we are presenting ourselves and when you talk about confidence in the workplace you know, I think your skin is one of the places that that starts. So for women in the workplace, um, you know, yes, you don't want to be one of that 40% for sure. Right. <laughs> yeah, and there's a bunch more etiquette tips as well at the Pond's Facebook page too. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. All right, take care. Bye-bye.